Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back, Patrick here. And in this video, what we're gonna do is start the new section in economics called Economic Systems. Probably gonna break this section down into multiple videos. And to begin to describe what economic systems are, I actually wanna go back to the overview video and bring back that fundamental transaction of economics that we went through between a consumer and a producer. So as we said, a consumer gives a producer money and then in return, a producer gives a consumer a good or a service. Now in that overview video, and actually in most of the course, we're gonna be focusing on these two parties here. But I mentioned in that video as well that there could be other parties involved here. And another common party that is involved is the government. So the government could sort of be on the side here of this transaction and they could regulate this transaction, set some specific rules for both of these parties to follow. Now, how big of a role the government's going to play or how big their involvement is in regulating that transaction is actually going to have a big effect on the type of economy you're going to get or the type of economic system. The way I like to think of an economic system is basically a type of economy. So let's introduce some economic systems we'll cover. So if the role of government in economic decisions, let's start on the ends of the spectrum. So if the role of the government is very low, so they're not very involved in the economy, then the type of system you're going to get is a free market system. Now, by the way, there may be different names for each of these systems that I'm going to introduce that your textbook might use. And in a little bit, what I'm going to do is introduce some other names that you may see come up for each of these systems. So if the role of the government in economic decisions is very low, then you have something called the free market system. What's the other end of the spectrum? Well, if that role of government is very high, meaning there's lots of regulation, they're pretty much uh, setting rules for the entire economy, then it's going to be something called a command system. And then in between these, the low and high, let's call it uh, medium. If there's medium government involvement, it's going to be called a mixed economy. And most of the economies in the world are mixed economies. Now we can also show these different systems on a spectrum if that helps you visually see it better. So here we got the low government role, we got a free market, in the middle we got a mixed economy, and if there's a lot of government involvement, we got a command system. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go over each of these three systems on their own describe what some of their advantages are, characteristics, also some issues that each one has. But before getting into that, I want to talk about different potential names that you may see come up regarding these systems here. So sometimes you'll see textbooks describing a free market system as pure capitalism meaning just no government involvement. Everything is dictated by the market. Another word that comes up for free market, sometimes you'll see a French word, laissez-faire economics. And what this word means in French is basically let do, or let it be, let them be, meaning that they're talking to the government, so don't get involved. Just let the market be how it is. Now, in a mixed economy, notice here how it says pure capitalism. Sometimes this will be called capitalism in certain textbooks as well, but a lot of times you'll see a mixed economy being called capitalism. So you got to be careful, like depending on your textbook, depending on your prof, these words can be flipped around, like sometimes capitalism will be here, but sometimes instead of calling it pure capitalism for a free market system, they'll just call it capitalism here. But I'm gonna call this pure capitalism and then this just capitalism, meaning that there's some government involvement and it's not purely just based on the market. Another word you may see come up for a mixed economy is a market system. 
Okay, so notice here how I have a free market, right? Over here, sometimes a mixed economy will just be called a market system. Very rarely will a mixed economy in any textbook be called a free market system. That's usually on this end of the spectrum. But sometimes you'll see a market system for a mixed economy. Now, command system where the government involvement is very high, it's basically socialism. Okay, another word, communism. You'll see that come up. Now, certain names of people that are advocates for all these different systems. So, on this side, very popular name that comes up is Adam Smith. He was an advocate for the free market. He came up with the uh, concept, the invisible hand. And basically what the invisible hand means is that people in an economy following their self-interest, basically what they want to do, results in the greatest good for the entire economy. Right, so people following their self-interest. So again, no government involvement or very low government involvement. People are free to do what they want, follow their self-interest. He said that that's gonna result in the greatest good. Now this invisible hand concept, Again, sometimes you'll see it brought up in a mixed economy. Because again, in a mixed economy, not everyone is told what to do. Usually people are following their self-interest, but they do have to pay tax. There is certain laws that they have to follow. So sometimes you'll see this concept again being brought up here. So you gotta adjust accordingly to your textbook. I'm gonna keep it on this side though for a free market. Adam Smith was a big advocate for low government involvement and just letting the market um, function how it's gonna function according to people following their self-interest. Now, a person that you may see come up as an advocate for a mixed economy was John Maynard Keynes, right? Or you'll see this called Keynesian economics. So the different economic schools of thought, that's more macroeconomics, but Keynesian economics would fall in this category here. And then for a command system, probably the biggest name that you'll see come up is Karl Marx. So Marxism, if you hear that word, that's uh, associated with socialism, communism, or sometimes you'll see Marxian economics come up. And then uh, over here, the economic schools of thoughts. Here you got Marxian economics, Keynesian economics. Here you'll have uh, the Austrian school of economics. They're more on the free market side. Or... Um, also on the free market side is the classical economics. Neoclassical is another name that comes up. So that would be maybe like a mix of these. By the way, when I'm writing these, uh, these names here, this is by no means a substitute of studying these names individually because there's big differences between the Austrian School of Economics and the Classical School of Economics, but they all kind of fall in this camp. Personally, this is how I like to file these things, these differences in my mind. I first base it on the role of government, and then I dig in more deeper into each of these. So again, this is not by any means a substitute for you studying each of these separately in more detail because there are differences even if stuff falls in the same camp. And again, these are more macroeconomics, right? These schools of thought, but thought I would mention them anyway in case you see them come up in your textbook, you can kind of know where they fall on this uh, spectrum. 
Now what I'm going to do is in the next couple of videos, I'm going to go over each of these systems separately in more detail. I'm going to start with the free market system. Then I'll talk about the command system. So I'm going to start on the ends of the spectrum, talk about the two biggest issues for both of them, and then I'll finish with the mix economy, which kind of solves both issues. And it's why most of the economies in the world are mixed economies. And as I said, you may have to adjust accordingly the names. So you may not see in your textbook free market, a free market system. You may see it called laissez-faire economics or just pure capitalism, right? Again, these names, they can be interchanged. So make sure that you're adjusting accordingly to whatever your professor is using or to whatever your textbook is using.